Hey y'all, let's talk Greenleaf. Okay, I'm gonna talk about just a couple of big moments from the episode and I have to start with Carissa and Lady May facing off. I mean, that was one for the books, okay? Now we've seen Carissa read people's life down and we've seen Lady May read people's life down, but I have to give this round to Carissa, okay? Because she went all the way there and Lady May was not ready. I mean, damn, she pulled out faith she pulled out uncle mac she pulled out every single problem i mean she even tried to you know she threw grace under the bus per usual but she was like it's your fault like it's lady may's fault for everything i was like oh my god that aggression and you know who would have thought carissa to be a people pleaser i mean i wouldn't have thought that um but you know she got it all off her chest and she felt very therapeutic and i mean when the bishop walked in and lady may kind of like shut it all down I was like, oh, this is like peak, like hush hush, keep it in the family, you know, keeping up appearances kind of stuff. Cause I know Lady May felt wrecked, okay? But Carissa, you know, I'm guessing that she was wise enough to understand that if having to choose between Carissa or Lady May, obviously the bishop would side with Lady May. So it threw me, you know, that, you know, you go from Carissa just, just reading Lady May, like just annihilating her. So then the bishop, you know, falling on his sword per usual and talking about how he's not going to go to do his sermon and, you know, taking responsibility for how Lady May felt. So Lady May, you know, she had this like laugh and like this relief. So I'm like, does Lady May ever learn a lesson about anything? I mean, because she seems to be the one that gets off the easiest out of everybody on the show. But we know Carissa is going to live to regret this whole blowout because uh, Jacob turned around and got fired from his damn job. So it looks like uh, Carissa and her land and Jacob's good job are not going to pan out for her to get her dream job and get the hell away from Lady May. So before I get to Grace and AJ, let me talk about Charity. Now listen, it was a little unfair of Grace to say that Charity broke up a happy home because at the end of the day, the reason why Noah got kicked out is kind of because he had a baby with Grace, not just because Charity called, but because of the fact that Charity was up to some scandalous stuff, trying to snoop behind Grace and she called up the voicemail. I mean, that was the catalyst for it. So yes, Charity does deserve some blame, but you know, Grace left a whole lot out when she tried to pin all the blame on Charity. But again, why is Charity so thirsty? Like, you know, she had a come to Jesus moment realizing how terrible it was to go against her family um, to try to, you know, butter up to Phil Demars and, and angle herself for a position within the church. But all he had to do was sweet talk her a little bit. And she's right up at dinner with him, right up feeling him. I'm like... I've always been rooting for Charity to to get some kind of man together because she's so boy crazy. But Phil DeMars is a scumbag and I don't trust him. And that's the problem. Charity just has bad luck with men because she has bad judgment in men. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But I got my eyes on Phil DeMars. And you know what? If Charity wants to try to pursue something with him, you know, I guess. But as far as that spying stuff, that is something she definitely needs to cut out. Now let's talk about um, Grace and AJ. You know, listen, I understand what Grace is trying to do, help her son get on her feet, on his feet, but I do kind of feel like she's going about it all wrong. Cause I mean, this boy has feelings and granted he's the one that reached out to her. Um, but I just feel like she's still trying to maintain this perfect image with somebody who's obviously in conflict with her because of this pent up, you know, anger and disappointment and feelings that he has. So, you know, when she set up the meeting with her brother, which by the way, I don't understand why she wouldn't have told her brother. I mean, her and her brother are sharing the paternity secret. So obviously he's trustworthy. Um, so I just don't understand why she wouldn't have been a little bit more honest with her brother about who her son is. So when he was like just raving about how fabulous Grace is, that was too much for his son to handle. So his son is like totally done with it. He didn't put her on blast. But, you know, I just think that's like a lot of conflict. I think the truth does need to come out and Grace just needs to just suck it up and deal with it. But, I mean, the one thing I don't like about the situation is this. Listen, I mean, 
I don't think people should be shamed for giving a child up for adoption. You know, if you want to be pro-life, then you have to be pro-adoption, right? I mean, she could have had an abortion, but she didn't do that. So I don't know. That, that's the one element of the show where I'm kind of like, well, I don't know. I guess we have to like figure out as a society, like, does a child that's biologically yours have some sort of claim or some sort of right to have some sort of... um resentment towards you because you gave them up for adoption or should they just be happy that you didn't abort them? I mean, I don't know. I can't, I can't relate to that because I'm not adopted or anything like that, but it just seems to me like, you know, I can, I can understand when you've had a rough life while you might, you know, have some resentment towards your birth mother, but I kind of feel like if you've made, if that person has made that decision, you know, rather than to have an abortion, then Oh, I kind of think that that doesn't make them a bad person. So you guys tell me what you think about that because I'm struggling with, you know, kind of the shame that's kind of put on her when she could have just had an abortion. So I kind of feel like, well, you're alive, right? But anyway, so those are the big things that happened um, this episode. Jacob, like I said earlier, lost his job. I just want to see what's going to happen with this Grace and AJ thing because, oh, that was one last thing I'll end on. Grace dropped the bombshell on Lady May that she needs advice on her son and then it cut out. You know, Greenleaf is genius at how they choose the last word or last scene of an episode. So it's going to be very interesting because, you know, Lady May got her skeletons in her closet too. But judging from the previews, she don't seem to be mommy, you know, the, the endearing, loving grandmother. So we'll see what AJ does to piss her off or if she just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that energy was about. If you guys saw the previews, if you didn't, I won't, I won't spoil it. But you guys leave a comment. You let me know. What did you think? What were your biggest highlights from the episode? Do you think that it's unfair, like I said earlier, to um, make Grace out to be the bad guy for giving her son up for adoption? What the hell are Carissa and Jacob going to do now that he ain't lost his job with the team? And... I think that was it. Charity. What do you think about Phil DeMars? Is he really trying to get to know her or is he just using her like everybody else does? 